Hi and welcome. My name is Helmut Wormann Whitaker with Katase, and I am here with my wife Kay, Kay Kudal Whitaker. And today we are sharing another video with you about Kay's upcoming course series, Setting the World in Balance. And in today's presentation, we talk about learning strategies and how they may or may not change from a focus on group work to more individualized work and attention. And we talk about more details of the teaching and learning processes. And here's the question we received for this video. As you progress through the course, how does the learning strategy change? My impression is you start with group work, then as you progress through the program, there's more individualized attention. There's both group work and individualized work all the way through. It isn't, it isn't a progression. The strategies, the styles don't change. You get instructions, you get pieces of, of, of information, you get initiations, and then you do things on your own, and we come back together, and everybody discusses what their experience was personally. We all go around one by one discussing what the experiences were and what we feel our handicaps were, where we, we fell apart, um, what kind of questions we have about it all. And all of that gets discussed, the questions answered, and any new pieces of information that can help somebody over a hurdle so that they can get past those blocks and throw them away and do it. And then do the ceremonies, do the processes again. This is, these are not ceremonies and things that we do once. The Katasi tradition, we do all these things over and over and over for the rest of our lives. Some people do them quite frequently, others not so frequently. It's extremely personal. I wanted to ask you to speak more to why it's so important to share within the group about your experiences in that context of going through the ceremonies and the experiences. Several reasons. One is that as you verbalize it out loud, you are engaging other parts of your own brain and your own linear awareness, your nonlinear um, awareness, consciousness. So you, you anchor it more in yourself and you come to understand it in different ways. When we've had an internal experience that we're not verbalizing to anybody, we're trying to think about it, feel it, understand it on our own, inside ourselves. That's our own little tiny universe that is still full of lots of masks and boxes. And trying to assess it objectively can be kind of tricky sometimes. And we stay with one little tiny viewpoint of it. It was a very, very big experience, very multi-level experience. All of, all of these Katasi things are. And in order to be able to understand it from all these different perspectives, we need to speak it out loud to somebody else and be able to put it into words well enough to give the others, give me the teacher, at Helmut, the teacher, a understanding of what happened. What happened to you? What, what were the events? What, what did it all feel like? What did it do to you inside? What were the effects? So as you're voicing it, others are learning from your experience, whether it was extremely full and rich and successful or Maybe it's only you feel halfway full and rich and successful and you got these blocks and you had trouble in different spots and maybe you tripped yourself up with your own thoughts and second guessing and doubts and all the mask stuff. By verbalizing what you consider to be the successes and the not successes, you're, you're putting realistic views and understandings to yourself and to others. And it helps everybody, because especially in the beginning, nobody has these super perfect, extreme, technicolor experiences all the way through without any 
interruptions. We're still trying to get out of our masks enough to have the spiritual experiences without them chiming in and interrupting and bothering and changing our course and making up lies for us to experience and things like that. So as you verbalize that, then as I'm listening and giving feedback, I can point out to you that this part seemed very true and real and changed you in some way in your field and your understanding. And this other part over here that you're talking about has the signature of masks in it. and You need to go back and look. When we have all these different spiritual experiences, ceremonies and journeys and initiations, everything that we are experiencing is, is coming in symbols. We may be very visual, and the symbols are all very visual, and we see all this stuff around us. Every little piece of that, of what we are seeing, is symbolic. The, the journey itself is very nonlinear. And all of that information comes to us in a completely energetic, nonlinear way. And we translate that inside ourselves. Each one of us has our own inner symbolic library. And everything that we experience is being translated using that symbol library. And it makes sense to us. And every symbol that we are perceiving, if we're visual, we'll be probably seeing things. So everything that you see has a feeling tone to it. It has a signature, a feeling quality. And you can feel what that is behind the picture of it. And all that information, all the information that you gained during your adventure is in the feeling that sits behind the picture or the sound or the sense of touch or that smell or that sense of taste that you experienced during uh, the event, this, during the ceremony. You're the only one who can really translate it. I can guide you. Helmut can guide you to try to find that inner symbol library and that feeling signature tone that is underneath, behind all these symbols, so that you can locate it, find it, and experience it yourself and learn what it's all about for you. But no teacher anywhere, I don't care what tradition that is, no teacher anywhere can decipher your symbols for you. Quite a while back, before we started mixing all of our cultures together and mixing our symbologies, together within a tribe a really good leader teacher shaman could tell you a fair amount about what your symbols meant because the symbol libraries that everybody kept inside themselves were extremely similar but there comes a point where even that teacher can't tell you everything they can lead you and give you hints and we can lead you to finding what the symbols mean for you. And that's a process that goes on extremely intensely in the first level class and carries out through the rest of the four-year course. And beyond that. And beyond. So the sharing is very, very important to more fully understand what has happened and being able to more fully integrate it into our being, our life, our song. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's very, very well said, yes. And we can give you the next step or a follow-up step so that you can make sure that, that you're on track, that you've understood the instructions, that you're understanding what the spirits are telling you and giving you, uh, that you have understood what we've been trying to say in what lectures we Uh, put out in a class and in different instructions. Everybody hears things differently. I can give a lecture and set of instructions about a particular ceremony in great detail and be absolutely as clear as I can think of how to be. And you ask everybody in the room to not repeat it word for word, but in their own words, 
what did I just say? And it'll all come back different from each person. Some people will be really close, and others could be really far away. Sometimes people hear totally, totally different things than what I actually said. And that's all about our masks and the blindness that um, the masks keep us in. They distort everything. It's not, a, it's not just about the hearing. And there's this funny story from one of our friends who went through the first level, the third or fourth time, and you did the usual ceremonies. Mm -hmm. And she came up to you afterward and said, this ceremony wasn't part of your, of your first level. <laughs> so she has <laughs> gone through it four times. And <laughs> she said, oh, this is new. When did you add this? <laughs> <laughs> and it's always been part of it. <laughs> and she's not the only one who has, has experienced things in that way. She happened to voice it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>